So it's Saturday morning, and uh, it's never-ending projects. Just to, this boat, man, it's more than I expected. But for anybody that watches sailing, sailing videos, and they they see like like Delos or some of these sailing channels that have really big boats <laughs> you better think twice before you say i mean it, it, it's an experience sailing a big boat and it's a lot different i don't i know it has got to be a lot different feeling than sailing maybe a 36 foot boat but man it comes well for me i'm not a rich guy i you know, I had, I made a certain amount of money to buy the, I paid $115,000 for this boat. I made the money flipping houses. I saved my money and I paid cash for this boat. It needed a lot of work. So like if you wanted to buy a boat like this, it's all fixed up. I mean, you could pay anywhere from 200,000, 100, 200,000, 300,000, $400,000. And this stuff is expensive, man like this rig the rigging some just to replace the stainless steel line on this one of these riggings could be maybe 500 bucks because it's i don't know what size it's like 9 16 it's huge and it just comes it just comes with with a large amount of things so let me like when it comes to bedding stuff, just bedding, there must be 50, 60 things to bed to keep the boat from leaking if it's been neglected. And it's probably, it probably takes 30 minutes or so to bed something, maybe even longer. And, uh, and on this boat, everything has to get bedded. And then look, so I've been, I've been, varnishing some of the teak like these handrails I've always got with all the projects I've been doing I always varnishing something so I'm doing some type of varnishing as I'm doing other stuff but when I took look down here when I took these plugs out and took this off to rebed it those stainless steel bolts when I took them out you could just snap the heads of the bolts off so it made me think so when I when it comes to these tracks these tracks granted these things have been set in an atmosphere of no oxygen so whenever you don't have oxygen to stainless steel it makes it corrode but it makes me think that this whole track needs to come off and the uh, and check out all the bolts and see what's going on because and there's one here and there's one back there and so it's not like i feel like when it comes to the projects you have i feel like this boat to go across the ocean and to do it safe you have to check out every damn system you have to check it out take it apart and look at it so even though you look at it and you say oh it looks fine you find stuff so let's go i'll go show you something i just found earlier so let's go take a look at that so this is the back bedroom of the boat so come on in here and look right here is access to the back of the motor so if you want to get to the prop shaft that runs up to the back of the motor. This is how you get to it. And then, so come on down here. Now, those are the pulleys. Those are the pulleys. These these run straight up to the to the to the steering wheel. And these are the pulleys that run the cables back to the back of the boat. But come down here. You see the shaft. This is where. That's where it comes out. So right here, you take that nut off, there's some packing material. But it goes up to the back of the transmission. So the back of the transmission is right here. So on, 
let me get my glasses on. I can't see. All right. So right there, you see where those bolts are? That's where it attaches to like a harmonic balance, kind of like a coupler. And those are all good. So you loosen those up, you can, and pull it back, and then you can adjust the motor. Because this is how it started. It started with me trying to adjust the, the shaft. Because this shaft right there, you see that right there, it'll, it wiggles a little bit. So it's not, the motor's not perfectly aligned. So let's go to over here to the front and I'll show you. So this is the door that takes you into the engine room. So the engine room's got like a walk-in, it's a walk-in engine room. So there is, it's got a Perkins six cylinder and the generator's over there in the back. But down here, you see that right there? Those are the motor mounts that I replaced. So I replaced all those motor mounts and you see this right there. I think you call that a gunnel, but I'm not for sure, or a gunnet. And you, I had to clean all that up to where you can slide that motor back and forth. So it all started, like I said, from me trying to line the motor. But if you go back there, you see that blue thing? That I think that's what you call a coupler. So both sides have bolts that attach to that, to couple that together. Two of those bolts on this side is stripped. So when you try to tighten them, it won't. So that whole shaft's got to come out and... Uh, that coupler, that blue part, has to get remachined for the bolts will thread back in there. So that's just something I found, and you know what's going to happen. You're going to be needing the motor the most, and that's when it's going to break. So it'd probably be alright with two bolts for a while, but you know, you got to fix that stuff. And it ain't hard to fix. You just got to pull that shaft back, unbolt the coupler, take the coupler up to a machine shop, and have them rethread it to bigger bolts. Not that big a deal. And, uh, so another issue is down here on the road. I thought the rudder was uh, stiff. So the shaft that runs through on the bushings, I thought the bushings and stuff need to be replaced, but it's not. Once I took it all apart, that quadrant moves nice and smooth. It's the problem is, is in the sleeves of that cable. I showed you where that cable comes down from the steering wheel. It comes all the way back to here. So look right here. You see those sleeves, those black, those, those cables run all the way through the sleeves and they're they're gunked up, they're old. This, most things probably, I think those need to be replaced every seven to 10 years, no matter what. Whether you think they're good or you think they're bad. Well, if you think they're good and it's been 10 years, you need to replace them. So it's time for those to get replaced. So that's gotta get done at some point. And then this here, there used to be on this wall when I first got the boat, it was just a cheap steel, like something you would, it wasn't even galvanized. It was just painted steel, one and a half pole. But you take this out and that'll slide down into it and set on top of the shaft. So look, you see how, you see how that's square like that? Look down here, you see how that's square? It sets on that. So like if one of those cables breaks, you can just slide it on top of that. So I just took this piece right here and cut it off of all that rusty steel. And I went and got some stainless steel and had a guy weld this together. But you know, it wasn't cheap. This cost $225, I think, to have done. And then when I looked around the stores in Annapolis and I found this. And this was like, I think I paid 75 bucks for this. And then, so if, if it, you ever have an emergency, you just slide that down in there, that slides there. And then I got a pin that goes through there and then it, then you can steer it. So that, so that came to, well, that was 250, no, it was 250 bucks, and this was 75 bucks. So, what was that? 325. And then you had to clean all this up, sand it, and varnish it. So, it's just project system after system after system that had to be, 
I mean, even the simplest thing is just an emergency tiller I had to freaking put together and make. And it was 300 bucks. So you start adding 300 here, 300 here, it adds up quick. So don't get me wrong. I mean, this is a pretty nice boat. And I think it's a boat that a lot of people would like to have. But if you ever decide that you want to go sail and you're just sitting on the couch watching the sailing videos and you want to buy a sailboat, you should take in consideration if you're looking to work on a boat or if you're looking to go sail a boat and in what time frame. Because even though I want to have been a little classy and have a nice big Tayana or a big nice 55 boat, there's work involved, big, a lot of work. Unless you can just buy one for $300,000, it's all fixed up. But even then, you're gonna, it's going to come with the maintenance cost of something that's smaller. If you had a 36-foot boat, probably not even a fourth of the work of a boat like this. So that's the video for the week, and I'm just trying to give everybody an idea on what to expect if you ever decide to go sailing.